Okay, you ready? I'm ready. Whoa, whoa. <clears throat> I'm ready. Well, good afternoon, everybody, or evening, or morning. Good morning. Morning. Well, hello. Hi. Well, we're now on our, I think, is this our fourth port podcast? Fourth? Fourth podcast. Fourth podcast. We've done a couple snippets, too. We're up to about 6,300, no, like, five views. All of which are my grandfather. Yeah, well, f- four. One of them is me. Mm. And so, uh, so far, so good. You know, Rome wasn't built in a day. But welcome, everybody. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about home decor. Essentially, when we started, we, we purchased a ranch home. And it was a small ranch, about a 1,000 square feet. And one of the things that I did over the years, we knew that we wanted to do in addition to the home. And so over the years, what we did, or what I did was, when I would go to the Home Depots or the Lowe's or any such places, um, I would pick up the paint catalogs. I don't yeah. know if you've ever seen those little flyers. And they always have you know, beautiful pictures in it because they want you to buy their paint. I would save those, I would buy home magazines, I would uh, cut things out. And for years, I was planning on what the addition was gonna be and it's somewhat what the interior design was gonna be as well. I remember growing up, like from a very young age, that the house was almost always under construction. I remember, I wanna say the addition of the second floor. I definitely vividly remember the brown room and of course, any other things that we've done since then. So it, it, I got to see the progression of the house take place, the entire basement when I think I was in fifth grade, maybe eight, nine, 10, uh, had flooded. So he redid the entire basement, the measurements, we went shopping. It was a whole thing that the entire family against our will uh, was a part of. <laughs> yeah. We used to go to Jordan's Furniture. We call that family time. We call that family time. We used to go to Jordan's furniture on the weekend as like a family outing. He would drag us around Jordan's and we would sit in all of the chairs and then we would go get ice cream and it was a full day. That was the real reason we were there. You were there for eight hours. No, no, we were not because I don't have that much patience. It was in kid time. It was eight hours. Hours. Imagine being five years old, being dragged through Jordans. And that's another thing is that we weren't doing our bedrooms. We were doing living rooms. So Matthew and I were playing in like the bunk beds at Jordans. We're like, we need the race car bed. And he's like, get down. <laughs> yeah, get down. down. Go to the living room. Sit in the recliners. We're like, I don't want to sit. I was a mean dad. Like, you know, <laughs> was, mean dad <laughs> you know. He was a mean dad. Children don't belong climbing on things. That's just... That, the that, kids that. don't belong in a furniture store on a Saturday. Well... Yes. That's probably true. Too, <laughs> but, but alas, you can't else. leave them home. Yeah, so it was a whole thing, uh, the construction of the home. And I would have to say the style's like old Italian, old world. Yeah, Mediterranean might be a, a good yeah. way to put it. Um, so it's nothing specific, but there's a lot of Mediterranean influences, um, whether they be Italian, whether they be French, whether they be uh, Croatian, who knows. But I'm kind of the kind of person that uh, I'm pretty visual. If I see something that I like, uh, it, it sings to me right away. And yeah. so it doesn't have to be anything specific, but I do have a, a, lo- a love for old world, um, I guess, influences. Yeah. And when we started the edition, uh, Amanda actually got to see the very beginning of that from her mom's tummy because <laughs> we were in her a belly ranch. Button. Yeah, we were in a ranch and we were confined to one room in that ranch. We knocked down uh, the roof. And we put on a second floor, two car garage, and a room over that. And uh, Amanda and Matthew are uh, our children, and they're 11 and a half months, give or take, apart. So they're Irish twins. So Lisa, she was a trooper, God bless her. Uh, she, <laughs> she was um, basically almost nine months <laughs> pregnant with um, Amanda. And Matthew, of course, you, you do the math. I mean, Matthew was like less than a year the whole time and we're confined into this like 10 by 10 room with all our junk just you know stacked up while also running a small business yeah running a business uh, (laughs) that you know and i god knows how many no wonder i came out so anxious yeah boards (laughs) that i was on or civic things that i was doing so yeah so there were busy days and of course i quasi gc'd the project so we did have a contractor but i was the person that was um trying to keep them uh, at their best. When I grew up, at least, every room was like a museum and you didn't touch things. You didn't move things around. You didn't add, like if I 
made something in art class, a little pottery thing, and I wanted to put it on the uh, like the built-ins. We have a lot of built-ins in the house. It doesn't belong there because it doesn't go with the room. It was very museum style. And each room has its own name, which other families don't do. Did you know that? Yeah, I mean, I probably were a little weird. And, and I would say that it just didn't define museum quality for yeah. us. Not like it's a museum piece, like it's expensive or nice, yeah. but it's like... Um, Stage. If, if you're Italian or similar, yeah. if you grew up in a house, a, a Jewish family was similar, um, you can't go in the dining room. Yeah. You can't go in the living room. Yeah. Unless it's the holidays. Yeah. And it was, in <laughs> adult my, rooms. There yeah, are adult rooms. Kids pun, don't go in the adult rooms. Punishable by death. <laughs> and so um, a lot of the rooms in this house when, we, uh, when the children were younger... We're not traditional dining rooms or necessarily traditional living rooms, but there were a few nice rooms that I wanted them to stay nice. <laughs> and so they were somewhat off limits and I, I like things to be symmetrical. Yeah. So if you have a built-in bookcase and you have, um, uh, you know, a, uh, I, I do a spoiler alert, a, a, a gargoyle right here, well, if there's a... I don't know, fireplace in the middle, and then the other bookcase over here. Well, a gargoyle belongs over there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, your, you know, clay project from fourth grade doesn't. We have uh, different rooms in the house that have, I wouldn't say distinguishable things to it, but they have names because of it. So we have the slate room, which has... Well, that's distinguishable because the floor is a slate floor. Um, no so one I, would know that though. Like it's a slate style. Floor, I knew what so slate I, you know, was before I knew who Santa was because it was the slate room. That's what we called it. Yeah, and the uh, the fireplace, the hearth of the fireplace is also tiled in a slate style stone. So <laughs> that's why we call that one the slate room. It, we have the brown room with the brown couches and the brown walls. That's because it's a blue. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so we did. The brown room, there's the study, and the study is exactly what you think. It looks like someone should be in there with a robe and a glass of scotch, smoking a cigar. Yeah. There's Brandy. Brandy, maybe. Brandy, I, yeah. I spoke. There's the great room, which is nice, great. It's a great It's a great room. room. Yeah, well, I, so that's one of those, it was a bit of a fad at that time, the great rooms all of a sudden. This was 1999 when we did the edition. All of a sudden, people wanted a great room, and, and you were like, oh, if I could only have a great room. <laughs> a great room. So, All these average rooms, I'm sick of them. So I built a great room that ended up becoming a museum room because yeah. essentially it was an off-limits room because everything that was in there... Was so what, great. What, well, it was kind of nice. Yeah. And so I didn't want the kids climbing all over everything. Which is definitely one of the reasons why I would call our house museum-like because each exhibit at a museum has its own style and each room has its own name it's kind of like the isabella stewart gardner museum sure. there's the blue room and that's that's kind of how the house is and you have to stay behind the red, uh, the behind red the, room thing, don't those, touch like, the walls yeah, like, it's like being at a you know okay stay in, in here yeah. stay in your lane the worst field trip ever <clears throat> no it's a great field trip. it's a great field trip we have some of the things that my friends growing up had commented on is that we have a lot of encyclopedias yeah so I'd like to tell you that I read a lot, but I, I, I do if you include, you know, three minute articles online and things of that nature. So I, I read every day and lots of it, but I haven't been through a book since eighth grade. <laughs> Yet we probably have a few hundred um, books in bookcases here. And I choose ones that have, you know, a, a, an old cool look yeah. to it uh, for design appeal, not for... I mean, if somebody to, wants to read them, you know, God bless them, have at it. But that, Back to the mandatory family days of we would go to Jordan's after we went encyclopedia book shopping. We would go to thrift stores or something to that nature, and we would buy old books that no one was going to read but looked nice, and we were, like, five years old. Yeah, and it just reminded me, one of the other places that we used to go, what, what's the... Um, TJ Maxx store that has the home goods. home goods. Home goods used to have tons of great trinkets. And I was probably the only guy in the store. Right? <laughs> but um, they had just really cool, inexpensive things that you could put on bookshelves or coffee tables. 
Um, I bought a lot of that. And uh, Michael's. Yep. I used to go to Michael's and I would buy things and I would make, um, I make my own decorations. So different uh, faux flower things that uh, were in uh, urns and things of that nature, little ones like this, ones that uh, are still on the book uh, yeah. shelves 20 years later yeah, so and, we, and look good. <laughs> so we have books that no one's read or will ever read and we have flowers that don't need water. Flowers that don't need water and we also have a piano that nobody can play. Yeah, so want to hear the story behind that? More than anything. I thought you might. Um, so my buddy Rocco, which mm -hmm. is Amanda's uh, godfather, and I, we, we go to the home show every year. So it's a little thing for us. We plan it a couple weeks in advance. We go in there mostly for the the hot dog, the sausage, and Please you know. Tell me it, that you did not get the piano because you saw it at the home show. I won't tell you then. Do you want me to end the story? No. So I have bought. Uh, I've kept the home show in business. Let me just let me just say that. So at the home show, just some of the things that you wouldn't expect to be purchased at a home show is a baby grand piano. And I bought that grandfather clock as well at the home show. Yeah, what else? Um, we had a, what do you call it? A jacuzzi, a hot tub. And it was like an eight person hot tub. It was huge. It was, you know, the small, a small football field. And I was like, oh, I've got a great idea. We have a gazebo in the backyard. I'm like, let's put it in the gazebo. That way we can go in there in the winter. It's cold up here in the winter. Yeah, that's a great idea. And then the first winter came and you're walking barefoot 100 feet out to the gazebo. That's okay, because when you get there, you can go into the hot tub. It's when you get out of the hot tub. You get out and it's 22 degrees out and everything's frozen. The cover that you have to put back on weighs like 6,000 pounds because it's all water and frozen. There's no room to jockey around in there. Needless to say, I was the only one in the hot tub, except for like twice ever. And that even uh, lasted uh, for a very short time. And it took me years to finally get rid of that. And I don't want to tell you how much I paid for it. Let me just say, it was not one of my best decisions to purchase <laughs> that. Uh, it was a beautiful hot tub, but if you don't have it in your home or right outside the door, yeah, I don't recommend don't it. Don't get it. I my favorite thing about the piano is that it is an electric piano or um, a self-playing piano. It has like a, a player can, piano. A player piano. You can put a CD in it, and then it'll play the keys. The keys will actually move. Uh, which was great to freak out my friends, but we like to, during Halloween, put on classical Halloween music. So yeah. the Adams Family will blast off of the piano. Yeah, we'll open the windows from the great room yeah. so when people are coming up trick-or-treating, they can hear the monster they can hear mash, the spooky, uh... but classical, because we're classy. Well, no, when I purchased that piano, it, didn't, it wasn't a player piano, and I had ambition that maybe I'd learn to play the piano. Maybe the children would learn to play the piano. So we got them some lessons. Yeah. And, um, well, we don't play the piano. Let's just, that, that's how well that went, which is unfortunate because playing the piano, I think we'd all like to. We just, we want to do like uh, uh, I Dream a Genie. We want to go, you know, blink our eyes yeah. and then we can play the piano. Uh, it didn't work out that way. So I uh, was at the home show again a couple of years later and um, Steiner Piano, who I end up, uh, now I'm friends with the owners, which is interesting because I didn't know them before, but they sell beautiful high-end pianos. They're, I think, the uh, uh, oldest piano dealer in New England. They're in downtown Boston. They had a beautiful place forever. Great, great people. They were um, also selling these player piano attachments that you could do. And it's not like the old ones that you used to see with the paint holes in it and it would kind of roll. Oh, yeah. It's a fancy one. As you yeah. said, you can put a disc in it, whatever. Well, they had to come and they had to take the piano out of the house. They don't do it here. And then they had to bring it to Boston, put it in, and then bring it back. It's on the second floor. How yeah, you... yeah. And it barely, I mean, barely uh, made it out. And you I brought it down the stairs? Yes, yes. It was, um, it was, boy, that was something. And I got it, and it wasn't cheap. Okay, I mean, um, I don't know if that cost, it cost like five grand, seven grand, something crazy like that. Um, <laughs> don't go to the home show ever again. Yeah, no, no, but it was worth it though. Yeah, so other than the piano and the books and the miscellaneous names, 
one of the strangest things I've been told that is in our house is that we have one or two gargoyles floating around room to room. Yeah, I mean, probably what, one, two, four thousand. We so, have about four thousand. Maybe no, that, that's a that's a gross exaggeration. But it's let me not. just say this: there isn't a room in the house. Yeah. Without gargoyles. My room was the only room I made it that way for a reason for years until we found a gargoyle that was reading a book. Yeah. And that is on my bookshelf. I mean, we have two on the roof of the house. Yeah. I've you got in, the in my gardens. Uh, I, most rooms have anywhere between uh, four and ten gargoyles in them. They range from small hand-sized trinkets to full body sized gargoyles. Some are cute, some are scary, some are just weird. Yeah, so some are like Amanda. Um, I, scared. Oh, cute, cute, that's what I was thinking. And one of the things that, I don't know how I really first got into it, maybe I was at a garden center or maybe I was looking through uh, books or whatever. And you know, you look at, and I think most people are fascinated with true gargoyles that are uh, you know, on old, old uh, you know, structures as down, uh, you know, uh, spouse, you know, as, uh, and they're supposed to protect the building. They ward off evil spirits. And so it's a cool little story. Yeah. It's got some cool little history. And if they, they're done right, they look great. You know, some of them are hokey. Some of them, are, I don't like the hokey ones. I like the ones that are very gothic, you know, kind of have yeah. a, a, a cool. And we do have some gothic theme to some of the house as well. But not dark gothic, just kind of gothic in general. Yeah. The, I think I must have stumbled upon a garden center that, no, I take it back. Remember I was mentioning about the paint? Um, so if you get like a, hey, what color is this? They'll give you a little booklet that'll yeah. show you all the colors. Well, in it, they want you to see what the colors will look like on the walls. If you imagine a bookcase that has um, cutouts in it, so like an actual like a cabinet that you can open up but without the door on it so it's just a cutout it was showing those in a wall that was like a, a, a decoration of some sort in someone's home mm -hmm. and i looked at that and i said you know my great room is going to have those cutouts and it, uh, mine are much nicer than that these were just kind of basic but it gave me the idea and so i put eight cutouts in the wall and they're all about 40 inches by 40 inches and uh, one above the other in the great room and the whole idea was I'm going to find collect uh, I'm going to find gargoyles that I can collect I, mean, I always thought that the obsession with gargoyles came from Batman I, you know I, I grew up in an Italian family and so maybe I don't know, maybe it's in my blood. I'm not sure where it came from. I don't know. <laughs> he just saw it and said, ha, that, in that. my house, now. Bam. 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 Love that. The great room has probably the most gargoyles. They are lining the walls. They're in the cutouts. They're on the floor. They are absolutely everywhere. And it's also probably the biggest room in the house or yeah, that about. So the room itself is basically 24 by 35. Yeah. It's a big room. So it's a very big room. So when I was younger, when I had sleepovers, if I had like five or six girls come over for a sleepover for my birthday, whatever the deal was, my family, uh, my parents only allowed me to have like an annual sleepover when I was in elementary school. Yeah, so all the kids had to be fingerprinted first, yeah. background check. Yeah. We had to weigh them. We had to check their... No uh, candy. Yeah, right. They got uh, bag checked at the door. It Surveillance was, cameras everywhere. It really freaked them out. Yeah. So when they would come over annually, I'm like, I want to show them that we're cool. Like, I want them to see how cool we are. They so, could tell right away once they met your dad. You never spoke to them. You're telling me... That's what they like, the silent type. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, I would always have my sleepovers in the great room because it was a large room. We could all sleep on the floor with our suitcases. Not our suitcases. Sleep our bags. <laughs> we're all in the suitcases. Your suitcases. suitcases were when I kicked you out of the house. Yeah, you know, PTSD, it lingers. Yeah. The sleeping bags, we would all lay on the floor. We'd have, like, popcorn, candy, having a good time with kids and everything. That was when I realized that I was raised just a little bit differently than everybody else because we were sleeping we on the floor. We call it better. <laughs> it's a word. 
I would call it traumatic. <laughs> traumatically better. It was traumatically better. So we would sleep on the floor, directly in front of the TV, and also directly in front of six huge, scary gargoyles, which didn't freak me out. I was used to it. That's what I grew up with. But apparently, for like eight-year-old girls, that could be alarming. It could be scary. It made them feel uneasy. This is also after Matthew and I would try to convince him that the house is haunted because the house looked haunted from an eight-year-old's perspective. We'd bring them into the great room and it was cold because we won't like heat it during the winter because it's a <laughs> big room so it's like eerie cold and silent. We heat it we... when they came over. No we didn't. Well, we had sleeping we, we didn't bags. want them to come back. Exactly. So we would, it was like a cold <laughs> room. We would walk in, we'd be like, don't touch anything. Don't even look at it. Yeah, I'm like, it's a weird, you know, just don't touch anything. One of us, there was a remote. There's a remote for the piano. Yep. And we would hit the remote so it would start playing automatically. But like, the ghosts, you know, like we tried to freak <laughs> them out. Because Matthew and I, we thought it was a prank. They didn't know that. We never told them. We were like, wow, what a great prank. But you need to tell people after. Yeah. The amount of girls woke up screaming at any sleepover or with nightmares and that their parents had to come pick them up was at least 25 percent of the people that came to the house yeah serves them right like it was like 3 a.m we're calling the parents here <laughs> i'm so sorry but your daughter's asking to leave she's having a nightmare i don't know what could have brought it on we're sleeping in a cold haunted room <laughs> like, <laughs> that could have done it we would turn the piano on like at night when everybody was yeah. sleeping i'd hit the remote they'd all like, well and i think even if you were familiar friends. with a player piano yeah. you wouldn't expect it to have a remote control yeah and we do have some spooky and it was um, you know it was like 2005 like we didn't have ipads it was, it was right on that cusp before technology yeah, exactly. that now you'd like oh before like that wasn't a thing you wouldn't have known that the flashing yeah, now you'd red think it was light a bluetooth speaker exactly somewhere it'd be like right. oh what a joke but i scared a lot of I traumatized And them. it was a win-win, really, because then I didn't have to have kids in the house. and <laughs> Yeah, but I did have to wake you up at 3 a.m. to call their parents. It may have been worth it, because, see, then I... You know how there are some families, yeah. some houses, that they're the hangout house? Yeah. Well, that was not I never house. wanted that to be a <laughs> possibility. Sure of it. I think that makes sense. Yeah. But all in all, there are gargoyles absolutely everywhere. It is a staple of the house. I once... I remember when I was in sixth grade, I almost got sent to the principal's office. Bad kid. She was I was a really kid. bad kid, and I kind of knew it was going to happen, but we did show and tell in sixth grade. It was like an icebreaker the first week. The teacher had said, bring something in from home that accurately displays I told you, you not and to your bring lifestyle. Dead I, mean, that, I, mean, I was a weird kid. Yeah, I, you know, right. I just I wrapped it up in a carpet and brought it in over my yeah. shoulder. But I had brought in this small little gargoyle uh -huh. and I told the you know all the kids are saying they're like this is a photo of my dog this is from our vacation to Disney this is from when we went to Six Flags like you know they're saying cute things I unwrap this scary looking gargoyle and I say this is a gargoyle they are to ward off evil spirits so and they are all over my house we were making them all safe I was, You're welcome. Uh, it was the safest day in school that could have been. Yeah. And I was trying to say this, and my teacher's like, this really isn't a joke. You should. <laughs> I'm like, I, I huh? I and she's like, you, I don't really think you understood the assignment. Like, it's supposed to say something about you. I'm like, I would have to say it does. And she's like, there's no way that you have this all over your house. You're exaggerating. And uh, one of so the we kids. can pinpoint right there the decline in education here in the United States. Really? That's where it began. Is that she what you're saying? She was so upset. The decor of the house is definitely interesting and unique. Very well done, but interesting and unique. And it was very strict growing up. And all of a sudden, I don't know when it happened, everything changed. And then we just started bringing these weird, nonsensical things into the house. For example... Friends? No, I'm just... I'm, you're, I'm, I'm making no, that I, up. No, I didn't have any. I didn't bring any. <laughs> <laughs> guys are like, can I meet your parents? I'm like, can we do it somewhere else? I don't think you should I mean, do that. Can I give you a virtual tour? Yeah, I'm like, you can FaceTime them. I just I'll have them stand next to a blank wall. I don't want them yeah. to know. We 
definitely started changing the strictness up a little bit and I think the first thing that kind of did that was the slam man. Mom claims that that was her idea. No, you know, mom claims a lot of things. She's got what we call revisionist memory. And so the slam man, for any of you that um, aren't working out in your basement, I purchased because it's a boxing yep. uh, virtual thing. And so basically, you know, the lights in the eyes light up and you're supposed to, you know, give them a right hook in the eye. Yeah. Right? And then, you know, different parts of the chest or wherever else. And I used that for a good 20 minutes once. Okay. And, I, you know, it's like a lot of those fitness ideas. Yeah. They, they, they end up just, you hang clothes and things of that yeah. nature. And uh, it's actually a really good thing yeah. if you're going, I, I shouldn't say like really good, but it is a good thing if you're going to use it. It was the closest thing to like interactive working out at that time because once again it was like the early 2000s yeah it was in a really small area at the unfinished part of the basement and so you couldn't really move around much you're not inspired yeah. to go in the basement or no. whatever and, and I, I think generally speaking I, I try to stay from getting out of shape but to use something like that all the time you'd actually really want to get in shape yeah and so uh, you know it was kind of um, it was a good idea that didn't. It ended up not being used, pushed to the side, until one faithful day when it got dragged onto the front porch. Well, Lisa was saying for for years, you gotta get rid of that. You gotta, it, it takes up, I mean, it, no space. it's half a person. Yeah. You know, it's just this, it, and it's in the unfinished side of the basement, and you have to fill the bottom with sand. Yeah. So the thing weighs like 150 pounds, but it's like dead weight on the bottom, and I'm like, you know, Matt would have to help me. Or It'd be a little project. I'm like, you know, what are we going to do with it? Blah, blah, yeah. blah. So finally, she pushes enough. And I said, all right. And so we're going to get rid of it. And I had Matt help me. And the two of us carried it upstairs. We have a farmer's porch on the outside. So when we did the addition, I didn't want it to look like um, you put a ranch on top of a ranch. Yeah. I wanted it to look like this is the way the house was built. And although the inside is very Mediterranean. The outside is very Americana. It's a, yeah. it's a true uh, farmhouse style, if you will. Yeah. So I like the porch. I think that most people would. It's, it's a good place to hang out. Uh, Amanda and Lisa hang out there on their Saturday nights and, you know, talk. We oh. drink in front of the neighbors. Yeah. The neighbors know. Oh, my God. They dread Saturday nights around here. They really do. And yeah. We'll be sitting outside karaokeing, karaokeing to no music. Um, drunk on the front porch, and the neighbors will walk it's, by it makes and they'll me be so like, proud. "It really does." It's a good representation of our family as a whole. Uh, maybe not as a whole, but you know, it, for for a, a section of the family. <laughs> but so we brought it up, and I put it in the corner, and he's green, but he's like this aqua green, right? And like literally, he's probably like five feet, yeah, eight, five feet seven. So. Um, from a distance, other than he's green, <laughs> you know, silhouette wise, it looks like a person. Yeah. No arms, it's a bust. A bust on top of, you know, a sand filled whatever. Yeah. So I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna dress him up. And I did. And he did. And I wanna say this was like four did years ago. Did Mommy say it was her idea? She said it was fully I'll, her idea. I'll give her 50% credit. You know why? You know, you got Because you're in a marriage. This is what makes marriage is special. This yes, is, it's the compromise. This is how this is how a marriage works. <laughs> you know, yes. That, as any good wife would say, what's mine is mine and what's yours is mine. Amen. Amen. Yeah, so we've been dressing up the slam man since that faithful day. It's gone through just normal T shirt, like Hawaiian shirt, to I put my bikini on it once. Seasonal stuff. Seasonal so, stuff. We dressed up seasonally. Like, so, like right now, he's wearing a Hawaiian Tommy Bahama. Yeah. He's got a little Nogzema around his nose. Yeah. Um, I think he has a whistle or something on him. Uh, he might have a whistle right now. Does he? Is he wearing a hat currently? He's wearing a hat. Like if the Red Sox or the Patriots are in the uh, yeah. Super Bowl World we'll Series, put a jersey whatever, on him. Your jersey, you know, put the uh, whoever the team hat is on. We've got one of those ring doorbells, and I used to have dry cleaning. A friend of mine owned a dry cleaning uh, service, and he would deliver, pick yeah. up and deliver. And he's walking in the house one day, and he would lay it. We've got one of those sliding-type rocking little benches, you know, yeah. that just kind of go back and forth like this. And he would lay the clothes on there. 
And he comes up and he's laying, he goes, hush. <laughs> and, and, and he just walks away, like, just like you could see, like, he was mad. He's like, what, <laughs> what is wrong with these freaking, what is wrong with these people? My favorite so far is that for Halloween during 2020, I bought a plague doctor mask for my Halloween costume. And when I was done with the costume, we put the plague doctor mask on the slam man for months. Yeah. He had skeleton arms, I think, the plague doctor mask, yeah. and a small boy in our neighborhood when he would walk mm -hmm. by would go, monster, monster. It's and, a staple. And he was pointing to Amanda. Yeah, and I'd be like, no, it, it's, <laughs> it's him. But hey. Yeah, so it has now been on our front porch probably like five or six years, maybe more. And so like at Christmas time, we'll put a Santa hat on him. Yeah. We'll put, uh, a, you know, you know, a, a red scarf, whatever we can find that would make it look season, seasonal. <laughs> you know, or um, if it's a holiday, yeah. it's something specific to that. Well, we don't really decorate the house for holidays. We're not, yeah, we we're do. not, well, not overly. Instead of putting up the Christmas tree, we instead have a six foot tall cardboard cutout of Santa that we have. It's the real Santa. It's the real Santa. He's the, he's the real Santa. And he watches you while you're sleeping, and he knows when you're awake. Yeah, so I, I take a, a table that's, a, um, what are the tables called that you put on the side of a couch? End table? Yeah, like an end table. And so I put an end table, again, we have the big windows in the great room. So I put an end table there, and I put the Santa, who, like Amanda said, is about six feet tall. I put him on top of that. Yeah. So that way his feet are about the same height of the bottom of the window. And the windows, it's a multiple window, so the windows are like eight feet tall. Well, I put a, a spotlight on the uh, underneath it and shine it right on the Santa Claus, and I put it on a timer. And so when people are walking by, they look up and they're like, what is wrong with those people? They really and there's do. a giant Santa Claus in the window. And he looks lifelike. Yeah. And he looks cool. <laughs> you know, well, last year, if I'm remembering correctly, we had the Santa lit up in the window. And we had the Slam Man with the Plague Doctor mask on with a Santa hat on. Nothing says Christmas like a Plague Doctor with a Santa Nothing hat Nothing says Nightmare Before Christmas like yeah, a Plague Doctor yeah. with the Santa hat on. I don't even know what that movie was about. I was like, the Nightmare what? Before Christmas? It was a terrible movie. It was... A really, really bad movie, but it, it was even bad when we were kids. Like, I don't, like, Matthew didn't like it. I didn't really like we it. We watched it a few years ago, you and I, because you yeah. were telling me that you loved it. You loved it. Well, and I'm like, it's okay. a staple for the goth community. I like to think of myself as a member of the goth community, so I have to embrace all things gothic. Yeah, but you didn't have to renew your membership there. I didn't know it was going to be bad. I thought, oh, you know, the goths like it. I'm a goth. I'll, I'll like it. Like ten minutes into it, we're like, this is bad, bro. I mean, like, it's... like dad's looking at me, like, are you kidding me? I'm trying to keep a straight face, like I'm enjoying it, and don't know that he's staring daggers into my side. It was so bad. Music was terrible, acting was terrible, script was awful, animation was bad. Did they ever don't know what the line really was? Didn't get really good reviews. Dad, it's one of the top movies. It is known as one of the best like Halloween movies. It's up there with like Beetlejuice. It's Terrible. Is it's, Beetlejuice up there? Is a high, is... Beetlejuice is like the head of the... That is what runs the goth community. Beetlejuice. Really? I think so. That was a funny movie. I've never seen it. You haven't? <laughs> Beetlejuice was funny. That's a, that's a pretty good... I mean, it's not like a great movie, but it's, yeah. a, funny, it's a funny movie. It, it's a staple. It's a lot better than The Nightmare Before Christmas. I just thought that since the goths liked it, that I would like it. And I watched it, and I'm like... Other than the This Is Halloween song... That's even, it's like repetitive. It's like, uh, 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 you know? I am the ghoul sitting under your stairs. <laughs> I am something in your hair. Like, it's. it's this <laughs> is Halloween. This <laughs> is Halloween. Like, is that what it says? It's like the worst Dr. Seuss book, but to like. No, but like, Dr. Seuss, at least you think, I, I, like, I mean, I don't know. It was, and then they like they stopped singing, and then they all and everybody was like, "Thank God!" On how great the song was, like that was written into the plot. Them being like, "Wow, we nailed that song." Yeah, because if they didn't say that, nobody else <laughs> nobody would. Nobody else would. They had to set the tune for the rest of the movie. Yeah, you know that was terrible. But I, I definitely think that our house is a good recreation. That if the Adams family 
their Nightmare Before Christmas and like Beauty and the Beast all got together, they would stage it in our house. Yeah, so uh, Beauty and the Beast, so the grandfather clock that we have up there, yeah. which is stunning, um, has the look of the grandfather clock that talks in the yeah. Beauty and the Beast um, movie. And I've never seen a grandfather clock. Like, again, I got it at the home show. If the Adams family wanted to do a reality show and needed a family to star in it, yeah. we could be that family. We're very, we're very Adams family ish. You mean we act poorly as well, and we can. Well, like I like dark things. You like dark things, yeah. Yeah, I think we could do that. Who, who would I be? I, would I, I think be? you'd be the hand, the hand that just skitters around. Yeah. Isn't there a gardener? I, you know, I've actually never seen the movie. Yeah, I could be your hand. And then what would be good is like I could be out eating a sandwich somewhere where my hand was just running around getting paid. No, that's not how that works. You are the hand. The hand isn't like separate from your body and it comes back. You are simply a hand. That's just not going to work for me. You need the body sewn on to you? I I need to be someone else now. (laughs) I want to switch my avatar. I I, I, I got to talk to my man. Yeah, you know, we, we got to renegotiate. Calls up Grammy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, I'll break them. I got it. Yeah. Our house is filled with so many things that nobody uses. We have two bars in the house. Yeah. All of the alcohol that is actually used to, like, drink is upstairs. Yeah. We have... We don't want people drinking here. Okay, this all, it's all for show. Okay, we like people from a distance. Yeah, we want people to think. Yeah. We're, we're interesting, but we're not. We have like five fireplaces that we don't use, but we do have a different five plug-in electrical fireplaces that we do use. They make the world go round. No, we don't use awesome. them. I mean, look how beautiful that looks. You should have seen the guys trying to get that down here. So we're in the basement. <laughs> oh my God. It had coming through a bulkhead. We have... We have a fireplace that nobody uses that we made some poor people drag into the basement. We have a piano on the top floor that has had to... Did we need to use a crane to get it in originally through the window? No, we thought we were going to. So this here was kind of heavy, but on the other side of the camera is one of those bars. Yeah. And it weighs like 1,200 pounds. Two guys that, that easily could play professional football as yeah. linemen. These guys were giant. Carried, I, I have no idea how they did it. Um, it just... It's a behemoth. It's a huge, and it wasn't like just going in this big front door. It will take a sawzall to get that out of this room at, at some time. You know Daddy, I mean? you made one drink at this bar, one drink. Yeah, well, and it was for my birthday, I'm and a it nice was dad. Pour- You poured Grey Goose into a plastic cup and put some olives in it and handed it to me. You're welcome. Like a real bartender, you know. Matthew, Matthew dressed up as a bartender. Do you yeah, remember? Do. <laughs> do. 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 Time that, that got any use. So remember what the reason was for that? COVID. What do you mean? Yeah, it was in the middle of COVID. So I made his twenty-first birthday. <laughs> I thought you were choking. I, like, <laughs> like, yet, no. I want to see that in slow motion. Like I thought you were choking. Amanda was really upset that that she couldn't go get drunk like an adult at a bar. Don't say it like that. I turned twenty-one. The month, the first month of the pandemic. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I had something. Stop. I think I got it. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> no, it was a big deal. It's so her 21st birthday. We thought she was going to finally move out. but uh, oh, sorry. Life is so hard sometimes. I, oh, wait, sorry. I would do that, but it cuts the inside of my mouth with my nails. Don't use your nails. I just can't. Use, just use the pads that you pick. Blood starts trickling. <laughs> <laughs> this is Halloween. This is Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> it's just my blood's on the gargoyles. Yeah, no, I spent my 21st birthday getting served at the bar that no one's ever used. We um, hired a professional caterer, a good friend of mine, mm-hmm. Brett Henry. Mm-hmm. Brett Henry Caterer, catering. Um, and he came here with... He came here with so much Grey Goose. Dad was like, what do you want to like drink? I'm like, well, do like um, a margarita, do a Cosmo, do an apple martini, and I want a dirty martini. Four of us. Four of us. So... We had, like, those things that you fill the lemonade pitchers with that you can, I don't know, whatever those things are. And it was the filled type, the with... The thing at the bar type ones. It yeah. Like, it's like a three-gallon thing with the spigot. Yeah, and it was filled with those four beverages. And when you're not, like, at a bar and you can actually mix it individually, Brett was 
great about it, he poured as much liquor into it as possible because he didn't want to Lots. not get us drunk. So I was here. My important. boyfriend at the time was here. Mm-hmm. Matthew, my older brother, mom and dad. Dad doesn't drink. Um, and then my four grandparents were here, and that's how we celebrated my 21st birthday. Yeah, yeah. I think... All of them getting liquored up little, like little kids. All of them like, got liquored like, up. Like, you know, at the train tracks or behind the high school stands, you know what I mean? When you're like 15 or something, or, you know. It smelled like Grey Goose in the house for two weeks. Right. And so what we did, because this room down here, there's a bar, as I said, on that side. There's a beautiful bar, even with a nice mirror behind it with hanging glasses, whatever. And the rest down here is nice, right? And we don't use it, but it's just nice. I want it to stay nice, right? He doesn't drink. Uh, yeah. He no, got a bar. Bars are to put stuff on. They're not to drink. It's what a bar mean? in the basement. Go Who to, are you showing? Go to somebody else's bar and drink. That, I, mean, I that. do. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, We I, drink on the front porch. Uh, we literally we have bars all over the house. We sit on the front porch next to the slam man and we drink. Yeah, so nobody was allowed yeah. out at that time. Like, you know, uh, the yeah. world was stopped. And so instead of going out to a bar, we um, came to our own bar. And it was a, it was a nice party. We had no, a lot of fun. that's another thing. What? what we now? put all the liquor at the bar downstairs. Yes, we did. You don't drink. No, I don't. Matthew wasn't really drinking at that time because he was studying for his med I mean, he wasn't, thing. yeah, he wasn't tapping kegs he, like yeah, he was well, the we had, was, we had like a lot of alcohol. Like he wasn't chugging or anything. Mm-hmm. And then it was my four grandparents none of which you can walk down the stairs. So it was literally just mom and I chugging martinis, going up and down. These I've never been prouder, to be honest with you. <laughs> you antagonized it! You, it was a Sunday night. Like, it was a total real They were bringing night. drinks up to them. But they weren't drinking Grammy don't drink. Grammy, Grandma does. only drinks wine. Yeah, Grandma does. Yeah. Grandma only drinks wine. Right. Um, Matthew wasn't drinking. You weren't drinking. Mom and I were drinking. And then my boyfriend at the time was drinking. But, like, there was enough liquor for 50 people. We had those, you know, the spigot-type containers. I'm looking at one of yeah. them right now. We had them with Bills. booze for, like, like a month. Oh I mean, that's how much God. booze he had in them. And, like... You would say to yourself, ooh, there's apples in it. Ooh, maybe we shouldn't be eating something that was set out for a long period of time. It was fully enclosed, and it was drenched in bottles of vodka. Like, it was as sterile as sterile could be, and I was drinking it for, like, a month until it started getting... Now you know why I didn't let them in these nice rooms. You see what I mean? You know, we can't have nice things. You enforced that rule well before I started drinking. You know how a lot of people, like, they get a dog, and they go, I don't want the dog on the couch? That's how Dad was with children. I don't want the kids on the couch. Yeah, dog's fine. I'm John. I'm Amanda. And we've been here before. And we'll be here again. Sadly. I- excited to be? Uh, uh, yeah. Where are you going with this? I'm not going anywhere. I just want you guys to know just how happy we are that you're spending your Saturday night with us because you have absolutely... Nothing else to do. Zero. Why would it be Saturday night? It just sounds better. Like if I said Tuesday night, people would be like, well, I'm going to work tomorrow. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's a, they wouldn't be losers then. No, no. Right. Like, so we're the head losers. And, mm-hmm. you know, those. <laughs> you are our faithful followers. Yes. Yes. Are we doing an outtake? What are we doing? We now? have to do are an outtake. Are we starting or are we going? Are we, you know, where are we now? Lost. Lost in space. Did, did you ever watch Lost in Space? Did you ever watch Lost, the TV show? I did watch some of it and I. I begrudgingly liked it because, like, everybody was so... Like, I can't watch, like, a 50-episode show. Yeah. But what I, I have to admit, that was a pretty well I thought show. it was pretty good. I, I like. I think it got crazy. Like, it just, like... Well, they couldn't figure out how to end ended. it. Ended. Yeah. You know, it was sort of like this. It's sort of like our podcast. Exactly. Ended. All right. Should um, we end it like that? This is the end. <laughs> this is the end. My, My friend. only friend. <laughs> No, no, my only friend. This is the Doors. A little Jim Morrison. For you Jim Morrison fans out there. Rock and roll. Rock and roll. Want to watch Apocalypse Now tonight? What? Yeah, anyway. I'll explain that later. 
Do you think she should watch Apocalypse Now? See, classic. Martin Scorsese. Martin Sheen. Jim Morrison and the Doors. Vietnam. Mel Gibson? Hmm, that's what, no, no. He was in oh, Vietnam. Um, Good morning, Vietnam. That's, I don't think Mel Gibson was in that. That wasn't him? No, no, God almighty. No, that, that's, what's his name, the comedian. Um, Mel Gibson was in a comedian? No, but you know what's an interesting little tidbit? Um, uh, what's his name from Wheel of Fortune? Pat Sajak was the second disc jockey that did Good Morning Vietnam. He was the second one to actually do it. He was actually the Good Morning Vietnam guy. Uh, the chick in the dress was on The Price is Right. The chick in the dress was on The Price is name? Right. Vanna White. Vanna White. And the only job she's ever had, maybe ever, ever, is on Wheel of Fortune. And let's just she say she carved out a niche. Model. I mean, like, did she? She is my role right, model. Well, and, I mean, they've both been on for, I don't know, my adult life. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if it's over 30 years. <laughs> what a world. Yeah, what a world. All right, so... Um, All right, I think we need to end it now because we've been trying to for minutes. So. Yeah, yeah um, here's a good way to end it. You, okay. know, you know how you stop an Italian from talking? Say, shut up. Tie up his hands. Oh, God. <laughs> All right, on that note, great to see you guys.